Okay, so this is a bonus video here because we've had the absolute pleasure of meeting uh, two of our fellow house sitters. So we're starting with their luggage here, the day pack and the backpack, being carried by Randy. And Gail has her own pack, but uh, it's currently being packed at the moment. So we're not showing that one, but it's a little bit smaller. Yes, what size would yours be? No, it's, well, it is. It's a, a 55 plus 10 liter. Okay. It's a different configuration than Randy's. Right, so yours is like a suitcase style, it can open right up. Yes. It's a 75 litre. Yeah, cool. All right, so with this particular trip, actually, can you just open that again? I just saw your little carry bags, the shopping bags. So ah. the shopping bags are handy to put stuff into as well as have yes. to go shopping, yeah? Very handy. Very cool. And I'll pop in and say hello here as well. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what I wanted to ask these guys, because Nat and I have been super impressed over our time of getting rid of stuff and getting rid of stuff, uh, to see that these guys are just travelling with a backpack each and just a little carry-on, I guess day pack, I suppose you'd call it. And the carry-on is more because there's things we don't want to lose. You know, yeah, our computers, our medications, yeah. our money, our passports. And when it's checked, you don't always know that things are going to arrive. But with the carry-on, you've got the essentials with you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, they've also got some very cool stuff that they're carrying, uh, being the gourmet chefs that they are, um, <laughs> as well as other things. What's this? What's this? This is a little portable safe. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. So, in this case, I'm just keeping some heavy things in it, but in our room, we would keep passports, mm -hmm. credit cards, all our money in here. Okay. And then it can close. Yeah. This unlocks. And then you can wrap it around oh, something sweet. Yep. if you got a, a water heater or something yep. metal you can so, lock that in yep. set the com a four digit combination and it's not totally foolproof but somebody mm. would have to have a good set of bolt cutters to get it in. It's so a discouragement more than anything. It's a discouragement yeah. Yeah. so yeah. that's helpful. Oh that's cool so there's even more stuff that I keep finding. Oh, wow. All right, what I'm going to do is actually move around here so we can get some good light and have a look at the things that we were super impressed with and have actually had heaps of benefit from in the two weeks that we've had here with these guys. Um, actually, let's start this side, girl, with your All little right. goodies. So we have a, a regular first aid kit that we carry like everybody, you know, with your Band-Aids and your cream, antibiotic cream and all that kind of stuff. But there's also, well, three things that I typically carry that might not be as usual. One we've already used, and it was a, a container of crazy glue or the super glue, because when you get a crack in your heel, when you get a cut in your finger, you just put some on and it holds it in place. Um, seals and it, it. Seals it, mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, crazy glue, super glue was developed for liver surgery, so it's perfectly fine and really cheap to pick up. Unfortunately, we, ours use, it is, we use it all. It's in the garbage now. <laughs> I also always carry a little bottle of what's called Japanese mint oil, and I've found this at massage therapists or at estheticians, and it has the most wonderful. I don't even know what would it be a eucalyptus kind of scent or something plus the mint plus the mint yeah. anyways when I've got a stress headache or an achy neck or something I'll put it on and it just sends out this heat that is absolutely wonderful so I always carry that with me and then these are a homeopathic medicine called Arnica and there are two different uh, <clears throat> pardon me, versions of it. One is the fast acting but short duration. So that's and it's the, the one, CH, it's the 9CH, it? mm. yeah, like this. And so it works quickly but not for a long time. The other is the 30CH, which works more slowly but for a longer time. Mm -hmm. And um, when we've been gardening here, which is not something we typically do, and we've spent three or four hours cutting trees and dragging things, we'll take this as a preventative to not be um, really achy and sore the mm -hmm. next day. Or if you happen to run into something and you are sure that a bruise is going to come, you take your arnica and it just stops it. It's like magic. Yeah. And you just turn the top. Um, and when you turn it, then you have 
a dose and you always take a dose of three mm -hmm. and they go right under your tongue so you don't touch them to your hand or anything else first they just go under your tongue and they dissolve there yep 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 and uh, I appreciate having them the other day too after our long hauling our <laughs> marathon hauling our yes. marathon hauling yes <laughs> yeah okay so over to the man with the chef knives and the spices so this was really cool for us because um I guess out of Nat and I, I tend to do more of the cooking. We're not exactly foodies like these guys are, but we've <laughs> learned so much from you two. So thank you so much. But this is a really cool idea. So would you call these little spice packs, are they like tablet containers or fishing tackle boxes or what we, are they? We got them at a, oh, what a you, craft, craft store. store. So they it could be used, for beads maybe. Beads, used for storing yes. beads. But somebody yep. else said they found something similar. Um, for tackle boxes so anything like that yeah so we have each one like this is basil Italian seasoning rosemary you can we just put little names on them you can open them and dispense them as you want they click into place and press this little button so they don't come apart mm -hmm. very easily and so we have herbs in here and seasonings like cumin spices. chili or spices hot smoky paprika just things that you're not sure you can always get at every place. And whenever we're at a good store, we fill up on things we're running low of, but it just helps. <laughs> it's making me think this one here with all the beautiful colors in it, it's like to go into the spice souks in the Middle East and just walk in and say, fill me up. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. It's very really cool. Yes. So you've never had any leakages in the bags with these? No. Not we, with these? We pack them like this with heavy rubber bands around them so okay. even if they came loose yep. they, they aren't going to open. Yep. All right, cool. Not foolproof but we haven't had any accidents in nine months of travel. That's pretty cool. So these little weapons here, um, we've spoken to a couple of people who have actually not so much house sitting. House sitting probably you don't get as much of an issue but people that go and get like uh, self-contained apartments mm -hmm. Or different accommodations that you're paying for sometimes you just have the crappiest knives yes so carrying your own knife you guys have come up with a pretty cool system here crappy knives are almost a given people can have <laughs> wonderful knives and they're never sharp or rarely sharp so we've just taken our two favorite knives and this is nothing more than newspaper wrapped around just a fairly loose fit mm -hmm. and then duct tape Okay. So it is a cheap, inexpensive, but the real thing is utilitarian and light. So they pack easily. This is actually quite a nice knife. That's a beautiful knife. I've used this one, by the way. It's fantastic. Okay, yeah, that's really light, but really tough. Cause Very the duct, tough. The duct tape, yeah. You can get the same thing in leather, but it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot heavier. And a lot more expensive. This is basically free. And this is what keeps them. Sharp. So you got your sharpener as well. Yeah. So you can sharpen any knives you want, but with these, just a, a nice paring knife and a good, your favorite chef knife mm. and a steel, and you're ready to go. All right. So do you know the weight of that there? Like, no, but I would guess. Uh, oh, that's hardly anything. Three, three quarters of a pound. Nope. Maybe and of course pound. it goes in our check yeah. luggage along with the spices. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not, Never not quite sure. Carry on. <laughs> that, that might be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other little pack that Gail just brought out to show me, because um, her backpack, as she said, is only a 55 liter. Um, but these compression packs, we actually learned about, well, you learned about online, didn't you? I just did. through yeah. some, some other travelers. Yeah, some travelers had up a, um, a blog where they posted how they fit all of their luggage. Um, for a year of traveling mm -hmm. into um, their backpacks yep. and they had it all spread out over the over the bed yep. and then they showed these types of containers their Eagle Creek but I mean I, I first of all I roll my stuff because mm -hmm. it's going to not be as wrinkled mm -hmm. but I can get all of this into one of these and it's just yeah Amazing, you it's know, a fair bit. and dress. that compresses down even then, more. So that's pretty much all of your down. clothes. It is. Put half of it in and show how it can compress. Yeah. I can do that. And while she's doing that, 
we usually travel with a little stuff sack mm -hmm. for just odds and ends that don't have to be folded mm -hmm. like gloves and socks and maybe a sweater or something mm -hmm. that we can compress okay. but the compression is so valuable otherwise things just tend to expand out and it's always a mess when you open it yep. up yeah so have you actually got just as you're zipping that up there um a favorite piece of clothing or something that you just couldn't not travel with. I'm actually looking at one thing that I'm very attracted to right now, which the is the uh, the buff, okay. the Canadian weapon of choice. <laughs> I believe it. I think it is a Canadian invention or whatever. Um, it's like a great big long tube, somewhat stretchy, mm -hmm. and they come in all different colors and some beautiful patterns, and it's very versatile. Um, I find that I often get quite chilly. So if I need something to keep my neck warm, I'll put the buff on yep. around my neck yep. like and it's this. just an instant scarf or an a bit of a... An instant yeah. scarf, yeah. If I've, my ears are cold, and probably this isn't looking very good right now, but I'll no, put it, it looks this good. way. Yeah. Um, and Randy and our son who has one wear it more as a hat. But there if you, are a million and one ways to wear a buff. You yeah. need to keep the sun off a less than covered head. <laughs> and this is a perfect way to do it. Or like the other day, keeping the flies away. Like keeping the flies away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. And it looks really good too. I love it. So yes, I do like the buff. Uh, you asked favorite clothing. I guess my suggestion would be layers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I'll wear a t-shirt and then an overshirt, something like you have on. Mm. Um, and if I'm even colder, I'll put my buff on. But having layers so you can add and subtract as you as you travel. Yeah. Um, you know. Well, I mean, to consider like what you've got there is pretty much your clothing and it is. and the mix and match aspect and you know like you've got you've got a lovely evening outfit that you wore to was it the opera or the ballet that you went to recently as yeah, well? Yeah, ballet. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. Very very cool. And what's your favorite? Uh, depending on the climate, but if <laughs> if it's warm climate, I wear a hat. Uh, a light uh, sunscreen shirt and shorts and flip-flops mm -hmm. or very light uh, pants, not when, khaki. But when you were light. saying about your uh, sunscreen shirt, you've been wearing that uh, green long sleeve shirt yes. a lot and even just protection for being in the gardening, having yes. your arms covered because we did get to yes. see your legs as well. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little bit attacked. They, they did. <laughs> yeah. But even this shirt here is... Uh, 50, I think it's UV 50. UV 50. Yeah. And yeah. my other one is UV 50 or UV 40. So I'm a little sun sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty careful with sunscreens or wearing a hat. I lost my hat in Vienna. So I'm now in Venice. To? So now I'm gorgeous with this. <laughs> it's been a very handy delinear <laughs> hat. <laughs> Uh, so were you guys ordering some more um, sun protection shirts online the other day? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, the one that got a little prickly paired. Yep, is getting replaced. It's getting it replaced. Very nice. All right, so uh, how long have you been traveling uh, out of and living out of these bags now in the, on this particular trip? On this particular trip, we left Canada August 28th. Yes. And it's November the 14th today, mm -hmm. so September, October... Two and a half months. Yes, yeah, so you've had a couple of seasons as well. Yeah, oh, we have. Yeah. Yeah, well, even at Delenia here, you know, we've been out in shorts and a t-shirt or a bathing suit gardening, and I've also had every single warm item of clothing on that I have. Yep. <laughs> it varies that much. It is crazy. But basically the same get up. We took a few more nice clothes traveling in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, in Central America, we'll probably, I'll probably have a third less clothes mm -hmm. because we won't be dressing for the opera and it won't be as cold and wet yep. typically yeah. so we'll have yeah. fewer fewer th clothes heavier clothes yeah very cool oh thank you so much for sharing your packing tips uh, oh, so we've certainly learned a lot and i'm sure everyone who gets to see this will learn heaps as well enjoy <laughs>